I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delving into the depths of America's current divisions through the lens of history with Jeremy McMullen. His book is a compelling work. It is called A Nation at a Crossroads, Gettysburg for Yesterday and Today. The author invites us to reflect upon the pivotal battle of Gettysburg and Abraham Lincoln's timeless words, drawing powerful parallels to the social and cultural conflicts that we face today. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Jeremy, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. A house divided cannot stand. It seems like uh, the United States in 2024 is more divided than ever before. Was that part of your inspiration? Uh, actually, no, it came uh, a little bit later. It, uh, initially, it started out with just looking at the battle itself. And I was interested in seeing the way in which I believe that there, God's hand was moving in that battle. And that's how it started. And then, but to be able to understand that whole thing, I had to kind of pull back and look at things in context. And it was then that I started realizing that a lot of the things that were being spoken about and a lot of the quotes from that period, I was hearing a lot in the news today. So it was one of those like, okay, I think there's something more here that I needed to start diving into. What were, or what was one of the quotes that really struck you? Actually, it was uh, one of them from Abraham Lincoln when he was on his way to the White House uh, being elected president. He made an impromptu speech. He wasn't expected to talk. And it was at Independence Hall. And you would think that he would talk about slavery or whatever, but he mentioned that there was a principle that he was concerned that if the nation couldn't be saved upon that one principle, he kind of stopped himself. And But he completed his thought. He said, I would rather be assassinated on the spot. Hmm. And it was the fact that he he didn't just say, I would rather die or anything, but he said, I would rather be assassinated. And that struck me because, lo and behold, that's what ends up happening. Yeah. And so it was, okay, I have to look at that principle. What yeah. was that principle? And what was the principle behind it, that the rhetoric was so strong, that the country was so whipped up in those days in a uh, frenzy, that the thought of political um, assassination was actually at the forefront of his brain? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You know, you hear a lot of the talk today about freedom. Mm -hmm. but the principle that he identified was liberty, which in and of itself, they're similar in meaning. But when you talk about you talk about liberty from a civil point of view that has a whole nother level of meaning than just freedom it it's a a boundary in which you do not cross because that's where another person's liberty begins and that was the principle that a that he identified uh, that it was impacting every aspect of culture and life at that time and you know when i look at today i'm like i see a lot of the same things it's, you know, my my freedom extends only so far as until it steps on your freedom. And I think we see a lot of people being willing to step on the freedoms of others. Absolutely. Let's give the folks at home an overview of what your book is about. Tell them what they'll find between the covers. OK, well, I actually I just take the famous Gettysburg Address and mm. I break it down. And so I start with actually looking even further into the history before the Civil War, the Revolutionary War, I go all the way back to even before the United States came into being. And you can start seeing the thread running through that led to our Revolutionary War. And then you can see the, that thread continue to run through to the Civil War. And so I run through, give you a little bit of the backstory of some of the battles of the Civil War, but ultimately why it was leading to Gettysburg. And then I dive into the, the battle itself in a couple of chapters and talk about the men and a lot of the interesting stories there. And, and then I, talk, I relate it to where we are today. So I just continue on from Gettysburg right on up to today. 
It's interesting, less truly is more because the Gettysburg Address is relatively short, yet it's so yeah. impactful that yeah. it has, um, that it resonates today as it did even back then. Um, yeah. What do you think are some of the uh, aspects or segments of that that really would ring true with uh, people today? Well, I, I think there's two parts to that. I think he initially he draws from supposedly his favorite document was the Declaration of Independence, and that's how he starts it. And I, I think, again, going back to that principle of liberty, we have to dive into, we have to understand where the founders came from, where that understanding came from, because they were coming from a whole history, right, of nothing but monarchs and kings. So they were starting something entirely new, and, you know, and it requires people to be dedicated to the to each other. And then the last part about it is uh, being dedicated and consecrated. It is just a continuation of the beginning part, but un unless we're that connected and dedicated to each other as a nation, as a people, as a culture, until we're that caring for each other and loving for each other, that's the only way we're going to have a chance of surviving and overcoming the divisions that we have today. You speak of liberty being an important message in uh, Lincoln's address. Do you feel we're deprived of liberty today? I think we're deprived of the understanding of it. Mm -hmm. I think we've replaced it with, again, the idea of freedom, which is whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it at the, at no, it doesn't matter the cost to anybody else. Mm. And liberty doesn't work that way. Yes, you have a certain flexibility and freedom, but you always, you, you're your brother's keeper, right? So mm. it goes only so far until you step on another. And I think that we really have to look at a lot of our politics and a lot of our positions on things through that lens of how is that going to impact someone else other than myself. So basically it deals with individual freedom, but it also uh, pertains to the greater good as a member of society. So yes. it's not all about you. It is about you. You do have certain rights as an individual, but society and the other individuals in the society have rights too, and they need to be preserved. And your freedom can't encroach on their freedom or no, their exactly. liberty. Yeah. Exactly. And a, and a big part of that, too, is I think it's helpful to start out from the position of you know, being willing to admit that you're a flawed human being yourself. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a big part of it. Exactly. Uh, Once you realize our perfection lies in our imperfection, we're a little bit better off. Tell me a little bit about your background, how you got interested in all of this. Well, I've actually always been kind of interested in history, but I've never pursued it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's always been uh, something that's been near and dear to my heart. I've always enjoyed diving into things. Uh, I've enjoyed doing the research and exploring and learning new things that I never knew. And mm -hmm. that was part of the fun of doing this was so many quotes and and correspondences that I came across. And it's amazing what's really out there. It's a wonderful thing with the internet. You can find a lot too. Yeah. But uh, I enjoy that diving in and uh, finding the little nuances and the little stories as you go. I would think a lot of people out there would rightly say a big part of the problem today is the news media, that they have come upon a partisan formula that works for ratings. On the right, you have Fox. And if you cheerlead for the right, you're going to get viewers. On the left, you have MSNBC and some others. If they cheerlead for the left, they're going to get viewers. Because people, in many cases, want to hear what they believe yeah. rather than so-called truth. So how do we, in this clay, uh, clickbait society, in this ratings-driven society, cure and improve upon that lens through which we see things, our media? Well, I, I think personally, for every individual, it begins with understanding your flawed nature, for one. Mm -hmm. That's going to impact how you, how you view things and your response to it. You know, our, uh, we're always wanting to believe that we're right in every moment. 
Um, so I think starting with that and how you view things, I think too, part of what you talk about is you have to kind of put aside the media for mm. a moment and actually get back to the days when you knew your neighbor. Mm. <laughs> uh, again, I go back to the idea of we're our brother's keeper. Well, if if we knew our neighbors and our neighbors knew us and we could just have nice, pleasant you know, civil conversations about things yeah. and be understanding that we live next to each other. Uh, I think that's a big part of it, but I think you're right. I think in, in many respects with the media that we have, it gins up a lot of that um, animosity towards each other. Mm. When really, if you give each other a chance, you find out you're not really that different. Um, there might be some things that you don't agree on, but that's fine. If you right. don't have someone standing there firing you up over the, those differences, you can kind of part company and, you know, possibly even learn something from the differences, but you don't, you can at least walk away without feeling ready to <laughs> punch somebody or do something about it. Exactly. And it's the digital divide, of course. People would never be this uncivil if they were face to face. But well, behind a computer screen or tapping into a phone, they eviscerate friends and neighbors because they have a different belief. And it is um, very, very sad. And hopefully we do find a way around it. And no doubt our strings are being pulled and our buttons are being pressed by both social media and big media. And hopefully it stops. Hopefully somebody takes some responsibility. And like you said, realizes that we are our brother's keeper, whether you're a news director at NBC News or whether you're you know, a community organizer in your small town. Jeremy McMullen has written a powerful book. It is called Nation at a Crossroads, Gettysburg for Yesterday and Today. In it, the author invites us to reflect upon the pivotal battle of Gettysburg and the words of Abraham Lincoln, drawing powerful parallels to the social and cultural conflicts that we see today. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.